super fast so we can talk to more people. Um, so there was a, a woman named Rosalind Wiseman wrote a book years ago called Queen Bees and Wannabes, and it was about how we like uh, navigate social aggression and how to you know help your kids with, and your daughters specifically with with relational aggression in school. And I, I read an article about the book and I was like that would be a really a cool part for me to play this like cool teacher that goes into high schools and like tells everybody what's what. And then I started writing the movie. And then as I was writing the girls, obviously with a much more interesting part of the movie, so my part got smaller and smaller, and the girls' part got bigger and bigger. And there are very few movies about the cool teacher. Not, there are not too many where they're middle-aged white women, no. Um, so for you guys, do you guys remember the first time you saw the movie? Yes, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> See, to me, no, because I don't remember not seeing it. Right. It's like, <laughs> always been part of your life. I like have known it since I was four. Did any, were you, any of you old enough to have seen it in the theaters? It was the first PG-13 movie I watched at home. Really? Yes. Oh, at home, yes. <laughs> By yourself? By, it was like my sisters, who are older than me, said, you gotta watch this movie. How old are you? I was 13. Oh, it wow. was, I had just turned 13. I want to say it was like 24 and some million dollars that opening weekend, which was a huge deal yeah. at that time. And for a movie that wasn't a franchise and a movie that was starring, you know, four or five young actresses. Um, and I remember, yeah, it was a, we were very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, absolutely. It was absolutely pleasantly surprised yeah. with the money. I remember we did that weekend too. We just kept going to theaters and uh, slipping in the back and not paying for it. Uh, <laughs> watching the movie was a great fun. So at what point did you guys think, oh, this needs to be now on Broadway? Because when you watch the movie, it's like, oh, this works as a musical. Yeah, I don't know. You know, we had been talking about trying to do a, a, something new and different from all our years while we were on television. We were doing SNL and 30 Rock and all those. <laughs> and uh, I, I think we said, well, let's get back to the theater because we both have theater in our roots, we both went to school for theater, and we said, I bet we could get the rights to that movie. <laughs> if we knew someone, and Tina tried and couldn't, so we went to Lorne, and then Lorne and his friend went to his friend Brad Gray, and, and they were willing to say, go ahead and get working on this. It was about uh, right the year that 30 Rock was done, right? All right. Um, and now for you guys back there, when you heard this was actually being put together, were any of you like, oh, I want to do that show, I want to be Regina, I want to do, like... All of us. Yeah. Uh, all of us. Like, <laughs> even when it's just like, kind of like Blood in the Water, where they're just mentioning, like, oh, there might be a Mean Girls musical. I think like, Taylor and I were doing Bring It On, when the first, like, room <laughs> remember this because I remember thinking like I will cut someone to be in this show <laughs> and then I was like we because we talked for years about how we should do things all the things as sisters and I was like we keep getting cast together um, and I was like we should go do that we just how do we find how do we call Tina Fey we've got it we've got it who's got her number and actually the, Gretchen is not uh, does not look like you in the movie did you think like this is not a role that would be an option for me, or a show? Well, I, I never thought it was gonna be, I don't know, I, I heard about it through knowing that Taylor and Erica were gonna be involved with it, and they were, had been other thing, and I was, I think I was the last person cast in the show, and I, I remember, I, I just truly never, I, of course I would wanna be a part of it, um, but I was doing other projects at the time, and I never considered myself as a plastic, I never, like, it wasn't even an option for me that I would be considered to be a plastic, and, um, as soon as I heard Gretchen's songs and I read the scenes again, I was like, oh, I know exactly who this is. And it was really exciting and it was just really fun to be plugged in at the last second in this puzzle piece. Uh, I can say, so I have known Tina and Jeff for years.